structural pattern matching. It sounds like a component of the transporter of the USS Enterprise. But it's not. It's a new feature of Python 3.10. And it's pretty powerful, just like the transporter. And I'm gonna show you today what you can do with it. If you're new here, you want to become a better software developer, gain a deeper understanding of programming in general, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. Structural pattern matching is a new feature of Python 3.10 that's coming out later this year. It looks a lot like the traditional switch case statements that you find in other languages such as Java or C. Switch statements are generally easier to read than long sequences of if-elses. However, they might also point to issues in your design. If you need long, complicated switches or if-elses to handle all the different cases, then you might be better off with a design pattern such as the strategy. Now, structural pattern matching actually does way more than the simple switch statements because it allows for pretty complicated pattern matching. And I'm gonna show you in an example today. Today's example is a simple command line interface. If you look at the code, there's nothing there. It's just an input that gets stored in a command and then I'm printing that command and doing that in an infinite loop. Let me run this program to see you what happens. So I can type anything I want. And it just prints out the command and goes back again to asking for another command. As you can see, I've used pyenv here to select the latest version of Python, uh, actually the beta version of Python 3.10. What I'm going to show you today is how you can use structural pattern matching to parse and interpret a variety of commands. Let's start with a very basic example where we're simply matching the command to a number of keywords. So I'm going to add a function called run command. And inside this function, I'm going to use structural pattern matching to find out what command the user typed. And we do structural pattern matching using the match keyword. So I'm matching the command. And then you can use cases to identify the various cases that you want to handle. So for example, if case is quit, I can print something like quitting the program. And then let's also actually quit the program so that it actually does something. And now you can add lots of different kinds of commands to do different things. Let's add one more. Something like this. Obviously, this doesn't do anything, but it's just to show how it works. And then finally, we have a special case, other, which is the case that's going to handle anything else. There we go. I'm using the R option here so that it actually also takes care of printing double and single quotes and those kind of things. So now I have my run command function that uses match and a variety of cases. So instead of printing here, I'm going to call the run command function now. And now let's see what happens. So first, let's see what happens if I type reset. I'm getting the reset message. I can type anything and I'm getting the unknown command. And when I type quit, I'm quitting the program. So this is a very simple example of using match with a couple of fixed cases and also being able to handle a default case. So now let's do something a little bit more complicated because obviously when we're writing a command line interface, you often want to provide some kind of argument and also being able to parse that argument. So let's write a second version of this run command function that allows us to do a little bit more. Let's call that run command v2. That also gets the command as a parameter and we're going to use a match case again but this time we're not going to use the command directly but we're going to split the commands so that we get a list of the command and the arguments that you provide and now what you can do is really interesting in that you can match this array that you got with ver various different cases let me show you what i mean so for example i could do this so here the case is that we're loading a file name and the file name is provided as a parameter. And let's add another one. Again, it's not really doing anything, it's just to show you how it works. What you can also do in this pattern matching system is that you can allow different varieties of a keyword and handle that in the same case. Let me show you what I mean. 
So for example, we had quit, but maybe you also want to be able to write exit or buy. And then let's just copy this over. There we go. And now if we type any of these three keywords, then this case is going to match it. Now for completeness, let's also add another case. Now, when I just copy this, it's not going to look very nice because other is actually a split command. So this is an array. So actually I want to print out the command itself like this. But now other is not used. So we can replace this by an underscore because it's an unused variable. And then this is the second version of the run command that we have. So let me call that here. There we go. And let's run the program to see what happens. So now I can write load example.pi or whatever, and then it's going to write that it's loading that file. Or I can write exit, which is one of these three cases that I mentioned here, and then it's going to quit the program. So this is really nice. And there are more things you can do when matching lists. For example, let's say you want to add an option to the quit command that forces the processes that are currently running. In that case, we might want to add a parameter dash dash force. Now I could do it like this, but now I'm only matching the case where you write the word and you write dash dash force. So just writing the quit word doesn't work anymore. So here's another thing you can do. I can use the asterisk character and provide a rest value that's going to be the other elements in the array. So this is going to match any list that starts with quit, exit or buy and then any other remaining number of elements in the list. And what I can do now is parse the rest of this list to do something else depending on the value. So now depending on the value of this rest list, the remaining elements in the list, I'm doing something else. Let's run this code one more time to see what happens. So if I write quit, then we're simply getting to this part of the if statement. And if I write quit force, then it's going to go to this part. Now we might want to add another option like minus F. You also see that sometimes. So now I can also quit force quit using minus F. Though this works, we're not really using the full power of structural pattern matching now because pattern match can do even more. It can even handle these kind of if else statements inside the case definition. So let me create a third version of run command to show you how that works. It's going to copy this over here and then let's create a V3. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use this if statement here and actually make it part of the case. I'm going to copy this over and I'm going to put it here. And now what you can do is print out this message if this is the case and this is also a condition that you attach to the case. And let me create another case to handle the regular quitting. So that looks like this. Copy this over. So now we have two cases. We have a case where we have this quit exit and buy and the rest of the parameters, assuming that force or minus F is in the rest list. And we have the regular quit command. So let's replace the version two by the version three. And let's run this code one more time and check that this still works. So if I do quit, I'm getting the regular quit. And if I type quit dash dash force, then we're actually going to this case. So this is nice. You can add these conditions to cases and then be able to handle specific things as well. So as you can see, this is quite powerful, but there's even more you can do with structural pattern matching. Let's create yet another version of run command and do something else entirely. Here we're relying on the command being a string and that we're splitting that command. You can actually use objects as well in pattern matching. For example, what we could do is create a class command that contains the 
commands information and anything else that you like and then we can actually do pattern matching on the attributes of the object which is really cool so let's create a command class to do this and we're going to use a data class for this so i need an import the command class has a string which is the the actual command and we have the arguments which is a list of string and then i'm also going to need to import list there we go now we're going to update the main function to actually create an instance of this command class that we just made and the first thing we need to do is we need to split the input a bit differently so let's create a command and arguments and we're going to read that from the input just like we did above but now we're going to split the input in here now we could use the regular split function to do this like so but there's also an sh lex library that does simple lexical analysis that does a better job at splitting commands it can also take care of things like uh, comments and other uh, command line specific things that you want to do maybe like files that are put in quotes and stuff like that and it uh, takes care of that as well so let's use that and i'm going to import it here first and then there's nothing else we need to do except uh, call the split function from sh lex and pass it the input so then this is what you get so we have our command we have the arguments i can remove this first line actually and now what we can do is create a command and then run that command so for that i'm going to create yet another version of run command that doesn't accept a string but a command instance so this is a command instance and that's not defined because i need to define the class over here obviously and now what we can do we're going to do a match to the command because we have an object and then we can handle different cases based on the value of that object. And I'm going to show you in a minute what that looks like. I think I forgot to copy this over as well. That belongs to the class, obviously. There we go. Now, I'm going to run the fourth version. And what I need to pass it is a command instance that gets the commands and the arguments that we got from the shlex split function. Now let's look at the structural pattern matching mechanism for objects like command over here. So in this case, what you can do is provide a special syntax to match objects. For example, if I want to replace this case of loading a file name by an object case, I can do it like this. So now we're matching a command object where the command is load and the argument is a list containing the file name and let's do the same thing for saving similar for quitting we can actually replace this case now by a object match and this is what that looks like so we use the same mechanism here for the various options that match the command and arguments is an array that contains either force or minus f and possibly other commands as well. I can remove this case. And in this case, it's going to print out this as usual. And then the final case, we can make that as well using objects. And it looks like this. And now let's run the program again and see whether that still works as we expect. So we have our command line. I can load a file, save a file. I can quit, simply quits the program. And when I do minus force, it's going to this case. And obviously minus F works as well. So as you can see, you can do really quite a lot of things with this structural pattern matching. And as you see with the object syntax here, you can actually use nested patterns where we're first matching a command and arguments and then inside we're matching values again. And that gives us a lot of power in deciding what we should do depending on the value of that command. 
So overall, I think structural pattern matching is a really neat new feature of Python 3.10. But there are a few caveats that you should know about. The first is that these cases are run from the top to the bottom. And that means that the order in which you put them has effect on what is happening. For example, here I'm first handling this complex quit case and then I'm handling the simple case. If I would turn that around, let's say I put this one above this one, then the behavior is going to change. Let me show you what I mean. So let's run this program again. And now if I write quit, we're going to get the regular behavior that we expect. But if now I write quit force, then we're also simply quitting the program. And that's because even though there are arguments to the command, this command actually matches. So it's simply quitting the program and it doesn't even go to this case at all. So that's something you need to think about when you define these cases, are they in the right order? And that leads to a second caveat. And this has to do with the match command looking a little bit like the switch command in other programming languages. And switch command, it's by some people, it's also called the wicked switch because it tends to lead to bad design decisions when you use it. One problem is exactly this, that the order matters. And the second thing is that if you have many of these different cases that you put below each other, then your function starts to lose cohesion. Overall, I do think it's a really powerful feature and in particular, the pattern matching is really nice. Now, next to structural pattern matching, Python 3.10 also has a couple of other interesting features. Uh, for example, there is a shorter syntax for union types. So instead of having to write the word union, you can actually use these uh, or characters here that you also see that I use here in this code, which really shortens uh, the code a lot. And in my opinion, makes it a lot cleaner. So I really like that. So I hope you like this example. Post a comment to let me know what you think about it and if structural pattern matching is something that you're going to use in your code as well. If you haven't joined our Discord server yet, here's the link. It's become a really fun, nice community. So I hope you join us there. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you next time.